All right, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about the unemployment rate. Uh, this is something that is reported all the time. There's a new statistic every single month. And because of the economic climate that we're in, this number is really important. So we're going to talk about what it is and why it's, report, uh, why it's important, rather, uh, and really some of the analysis that you can draw based upon the number. Uh, obviously, in today's climate that we're in, uh, the unemployment rate is not very good, and there's a lot of reasons for that with many uh, state and local economies kind of shutting certain industries out, mainly hospitality, and that's creating uh, a, a significant uh, impact on people uh, being employed and those sorts of things. So we're going to talk through that a little bit. Notice here on the left-hand side of the screen, I've got a little bit of a diagram here, a bar chart. Um, reflecting the unemployment rate, but there are two different statistics or two different numbers, one U3 and U6, 11.1 and 18% respectively. So we're going to talk through both of these are in fact uh, unemployment rate figures, although one is widely reported and one isn't reported all that much. And so we can uh, gain different levels of analysis by looking at which one or looking at each one independently. Uh, it's important to look at both uh, because it gives us a better picture of what the economy is really doing. Um, so kind of broad strokes, let's talk about unemployment kind of in general. The idea behind the unemployment rate is it's going to tell us the percentage of people out of work. Now, how these two figures calculate that is a little bit different, which is why we use both. Um, but ultimately, we're looking at the percentage of people that are out of work, people that uh, want to be employed, of course, and are unable to find work. And this is really, from a high level, uh, this is really bad, right? We don't want this as an economy. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, if you look simply at like a, a basic kind of economic model, uh, you know, the way that our economy works, the way that our economy is driven is based upon what consumers spend. So there's this uh, economic figure, what we call GDP, which stands for gross domestic product, basically is the equivalent of an income of a country. Uh, and that is uh, based in large part, two thirds of it is based on what we call consumer spending. So it's people like you and I spending money at the grocery store and on car insurance and to buy clothes and all other sorts of things that we spend our money on. So two thirds of that is based upon just what consumers spend. Um, so another 20-ish percent uh, is based upon business spending. Then there's government spending less, lesser than that. And then there's the uh, kind of the uh, end result of imports versus exports. That kind of rounds out the rest of the 33%. But two thirds of it is based on consumer spending. So our economy, the, the, the strength of our economy is built on consumers spending money. So when that doesn't happen, you get what we're in now, kind of in a recession. If you look back 10 years with the Great Recession, same thing, consumer spending decline, albeit for different reasons, but did decline and the economy obviously did as well. And if you think about it, just from a basic kind of purchasing uh, kind of uh, standpoint, this really makes sense. So if somebody, is, if somebody is out of work, so let's say someone is unemployed, uh, most likely they're gonna reduce spending. And the reason that this is bad is this actually creates this very dangerous cycle that's very difficult to stop because when people are unemployed, they reduce spending. When they reduce spending, let's do this here, uh, business revenues decline. Because businesses aren't making as much money, right? And rightfully so, right? If you were unemployed and without or without work, uh, you wouldn't be interested in spending money at any point in time. And so the businesses that you normally chose to frequent would not benefit from your spending. Uh, and then, of course, those, those employers might have to do some sort of layoffs, which in turn increases the number of unemployed. And so it becomes like this cycle that happens, which is why the government, if you've been uh, paying attention to what's been happening, uh, has been go doing a variety of different uh, fiscal and monetary measures, whether it's sending uh, stimulus checks to anybody that they possibly can, 
uh, whether it's keeping interest rates down, right? All of those things are designed to facilitate spending as much as possible because our economy, again, is very much reliant on that. So that's kind of the high level why it's important sort of thing. Now we're going to move on to the ways that we measure it a little bit. So there's two measurements. There's U3 and U6. Uh, another way of describing them is U3 is what we would call the unemployment rate. Um, that's the one that is widely reported when you look, when you open up the newspaper or when you look at an article on your iPad uh, or you're listening to you know a podcast and they're reporting it. U3 is the unemployment rate. That's the, the most common one that you'll see. Uh, U6 is actually what we call the underemployment rate, and that isn't cited very often. Um, so obviously U6 is 18%. That's not great, right? You thought 11.1%, which is last month's or June's unemployment reading since the time of this recording, July's hasn't been posted yet. Uh, and then obviously the underemployment U6 rating for June of 2020 as well. So the reason these are different is, is how they're calculated, of course. So the underemployment or the unemployment rate, so looking specifically at U3, factors in uh, people that are out of work. Uh, so if you are, you know, and, and how this is done, maybe I should go back and explain how it's calculated. So uh, there's a kind of a consumer kind of population study uh, that gets done every single month. And so every single month, 60,000 households are polled. Uh, if you think about it, right, polling 60,000 people a month, that's pretty, that seems pretty difficult to do, right? Um, but they do that every single month. It's a random sampling of people. So try to get it representative of the entire kind of U.S. population. Uh, and they're kind of, again, kind of trying to get employment prospects and those sorts of things. And they use that data to derive the number. Uh, so for June of 2020, 11.1% of the people that were polled were out of work. Uh, again, that's supposed to be representative of the population and that sort of thing. And it's a very good sample, 60,000, if you're familiar with statistics, uh, is a is a decent sample size for sure. Uh, so 11.1% were out of work. That seems fair. But when you start looking at how they calculate it, there's a couple of issues with the unemployment rate. Uh, the first issue is that it technically considers someone who settles for part-time work or it doesn't include them. So if you're someone that gets surveyed, and you say, yeah, you know, I got a part-time job, but I really want to work full-time. Under the unemployment rate, you would be considered employed because you have a job. Now, granted, it's not the one that you want. You're not working the hours that you want, but you are employed by their, their definition. The other thing is it doesn't consider is it doesn't consider people that just simply became frustrated with their prospects and they stopped looking. So the unemployment rate, again, is talking about the percentage of people that are out of work, but you have to be actively looking for work. So if you have put in you know, dozens and dozens of applications, you haven't got so much as a call back, the industry that you work in is just not hiring and isn't gonna come back anytime soon, you might become so frustrated with your prospects. You might think that there's not a possible opportunity for you there. You might just stop looking altogether, to which case you're technically not considered, but you're really unemployed. So those are some of the limitations of the unemployment rate. So when that comes into play, is you might see the unemployment, unemployment rate decrease. So let's say next or for July, this probably isn't going to happen, by the way. Uh, but let's say for July, the unemployment rate goes down. So it goes from 11.1 to 10%. On the surface, we would think, man, that sounds fantastic. right? Why wouldn't we be excited if the unemployment rate goes down? But we have to look at why. Might it go down because people just stop looking? Might it go down because people just settle for part-time work? So one way to figure out if that is actually kind of part of the dynamic is to look at the underemployment rate because the underemployment rate is going to factor in these two variables. It's going to factor in people that became frustrated and just stopped looking 
because they just felt like their prospects weren't there. It's also going to factor in people that settle for part-time work, which is why the number is always higher. So the underemployment rate or U6 is always going to be higher because it's factoring in that data. Whereas the U3 unemployment rate is not factoring in that data. So in a situation to where you see the change pen colors here, you see the unemployment rate go down, but the underemployment rate U6 go up, then it might actually be indicative of the economy in a worse position, believe it or not, even though unemployment rate goes down. Because again, if the unemployment rate goes up, that or the if the U6 rate goes up, then that means that more people are either settling for part-time work or just dropping out of the labor force entirely because that's how they, I mean, they feel their job prospects are so uh, just, uh, you know, not there, that, that are so um, down that they don't want to exert the energy. They don't feel like it's worth it, uh, which you got to think to get to a place like that, um, you know, that, that's, that's a very much a lack of hope. Uh, and that is indicative, again, of the economy and where people are. And we need to factor in that data because it gives us a better understanding of where the economy is. Now, in another scenario, you might find a situation to where the unemployment rate goes up but the underemployment rate goes down. And on the surface, if you're just looking at the headline, you're thinking, oh man, this is awful. More people are out of work. Well, it actually could be a couple of things that are really positive. It could be that people came back into the labor force. People became a little bit more upbeat. People think that there's more opportunity. And as a result of that, they now start applying for jobs. And technically, that means they now count under the unemployment rate where they didn't before. So what I hope you take away out of this whole kind of discussion here uh, is that one, it's really impossible to draw a very big conclusion, particularly about the economy, by looking at one variable. It's really important that we look at a variety of different variables to kind of, again, kind of fill in the pieces. Again, think of the economy like a puzzle. And the more pieces that we have, the clearer the picture that we're actually looking. Looking at unemployment, it's really helpful to look both at the unemployment rate and the underemployment rate because it helps us get a better sense of really how the economy is doing. Uh, and ultimately, then we can get into looking at, okay, well, uh, if unemployment is decreasing, what are the uh, subsequent kind of uh, end results that will take place as a result of that or if unemployment rate is increasing and the unemployment rate is increasing, you know, what does that mean for me personally and how I uh, choose to maybe spend my own personal finances if I'm running a business? What does that mean for me personally? Maybe I won't uh, spend that cash so quickly. I might conserve it a little bit, especially if I'm not necessarily very certain on what the future holds. And that's kind of the situation we find ourselves in today is people are very uncertain and people are uncertain. There's not a great deal of spending. People play it safe. People save more than they have been. Right now, our savings rate is much higher than it's ever been, which for individuals is actually a really good thing to have some liquidity. Uh, when it comes time for spending, though, for the economy, obviously that's not great. Um, but people are obviously taking precautions and that's important. Looking at the data, though, helps us get to a position where we can make those informed decisions for our households and for our businesses as well.